So we can say approximately 37 dB when I do not speak, I do not make any noise. <laughs> okay? When I when I speak, it comes, I mean it, it, it indicates between somewhat 65 decibel or sometimes 70 decibel. Okay, it's fluctuating because sound pressure is fluctuating now. Okay, if I whistle, which I guess about one kilohertz, that is about 65 decibel. Okay, but when I whistle like This is also about 65 decibel, same decibel, but what you feel is different, right? That's why, that's why we have to define some scale that represent how the way we feel, okay? That is, one of that kind of scale is loudness, loudness. So loudness and sound pressure is somewhat related, but it's not, it's not, I'm very sorry about this bad behavior, it's not, it's not, this is not the sound I prepared for the lecture. <laughs> frankly speaking. So, what we saw is very important three messages to you. One is, okay, I talked about the significance of frequency scale, octave, bandwidth octave, okay, one-third octave band, maybe one-sixth octave band, Okay, second one is sound pressure, sound pressure level. That is defined as 10 log 10 mean square average of sound pressure compared with reference sound pressure square. That is 20 micropascal. And by simple demonstration, when I whistle two different tones, supposed to be tone, one is close to one kilohertz, one is close to, I guess, 500 hertz, the same sound pressure level, but the way you feel is different. I'm sure you feel that 500 hertz has less, you know, you feel less, what I call, less sensitive to your auditory system. And you might feel that one kilohertz sound is more, more sensible to your hearing system. That means your hearing system certainly has some sort of sensitivity. And that is depending on the frequency. Okay? So remember, Frequency and magnitude scale certainly primary two measure that determines what is related with sound sensation. Okay, let me uh, go in somehow detail things. Okay, this is sort of a very quick review that we learned. Okay, Pina, collect the uh, sound coming from outside and the ear canal, which is the, 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 uh, the length of the ear canal is about four 
centimeter, 40 millimeter. Maybe you guys have longer ear canal, but I don't know. We can measure. And the eardrum converts the compressible sound pressure to mechanical vibration. And then these three ossicles, middle ear we call, amplify the mechanical vibration and excite the oval window over here. This part is inner ear. And then the, the, the signal pass through this cochlea. Okay? And here the hair cell is embedded over the bacillar membrane. And the bacillar membrane has the uh, two different uh, fluids. Okay? And the fluid in this case is a medium that propagates the sound. Okay? Okay. Okay. Sorry. As you can see here, the role of a pinna and the ear canal, all those things. First, the pinna collects the sound, means that, in other words, the pinna and all those system systems are doing some sort of minimizing impedance mismatch. Yeah? Uh, we can see uh, the, uh, their role uh, as, as saying, mini oh, they are doing, doing minimization of impedance mismatch. Okay? Therefore, ideal pinna would look like this, right? Like a horn. Gradual change of impedance. Okay. So that amplifies the uh, sound pressure. And these three articles also minimize, or in other words, amplify the signal, or minimize the uh, impedance mismatch. And, uh, and, 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 and this tube, this tube is for safety, okay? This tube is connected to the inside of our nose. Therefore, when we have uh, some pressure, big pressure difference, when we say, for example, ah, or some other action, then this pressure difference is equalized. So when you go up very high mountain or airplane, what you have to do is either this way or you may try, ah, but maybe disturb your neighborhood. So uh, the former would be the better way. Okay, this is for your safety. As well as this obstacles also plays, uh, when, you ha uh, when you have uh, some shock, very abrupt sound change. This, oh. sorry. This ossicles also uh, observed some shock so that minimization of shock, transmitting shock wave to the cochlea so that protect our uh, auditory system. Okay? Interesting, right? And if you look at our uh, cochlea in some detail, this is ossicle again, and bacillus membrane over here. And it's interesting to how the, how the wave is propagated along this cochlea. 